Hey guys, it's your girl Maya K with The Girl Files, and we are here with episode four. Today is going to actually be a two-part uh, series, and I'm excited about that because I'm just a firm believer, as I always say, we let God flow and we just follow his lead. But today I want to discuss spiritual warfare strategies for teen girls. This has been pressing on my spirit, I think this whole year, but again, I believe timing is important. And I just believe God gave me a vision of some parents out there who might be finding it really challenging to teach their teens, period, really, um, about how to effectively war in the spirit. And I think some of us even think it's just an adult thing, right? Because we may have been raised in the church. If you're out there listening, uh, if your teen daughter is listening with you, Uh, I think the perception is that the same methods uh, that were used maybe when we were growing up, you know, I'm in my late 30s when we were growing up. I think that the perception was that, you know, this is how it works. And maybe we've kind of felt a little disconnected with trying to process and teach our children, our youth, our teens, the same methods that we were raised under. So like I always tell young people, Just because, you know, your grandparents or your parents might be pressuring you uh, with religion and prior to, of course, the pandemic, you may have been forced to go to church all the time. Just because their methods may not be right, it doesn't mean that the message is wrong. Uh, Christ is still the living God and the word of God is the end all and be all of everything. Um, And it is the final decision maker in my life and it should be in yours as well. I encourage it to be. Um, And so with that, it doesn't mean because it's been maybe presented wrong that it is wrong. And so when God gave me this vision to uh, record a series on spiritual warfare strategies for teen girls, I thought what better time, of course, than the end of the year so that you can go into 2021 as a young lady equipped. I want you to be really equipped. And I want you to understand that, again, the message is not wrong, but you can sometimes feel like, just like if a teacher is teaching you, that you're not grasping those concepts. Or if it's a science teacher, you're not picking up on what's being um, fed to you because you're like, wait, I don't really understand this. But when someone, maybe the tutor comes into the room and helps you break down that concept or, you know, you end up going to tutoring. And I know now it's via Zoom or digitally. You you're still getting help from someone that maybe isn't your teacher. Right. And that person is able to break down the concept and give you a way or a method in which you can use it and apply it. And so this is the same thing here. Um, The way God operates in the kingdom, his word is powerful, is sharper than any two edged sword. And he is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. So the content doesn't change, just like the basic science rules that we learned as a kid. And as you may be learning now in your science class, but it's just the way it's applied. So I'm praying that God will use me as a vessel today to really be able to assist you in that area because you have what it takes to conquer uh, the enemy when he's coming up against you when your parents may not even be in the room to pray over you or be there or you feel like man look I'm tired of carrying my mother and my grandmother's religion God I want to know you from myself and that's really what this is so let's pray really quick I'm going to go right into it and again like I said this is going to be a two-part series Father, I just thank you for using me as your vessel and instrument today. I thank you for every young lady that will hear this message, and I decree and declare that it will go viral, not for my fame, not for my glory, but because I know that the more the good news spreads across this earth, the more young girls hear the good news of God and preached in different ways, uh, they are able to grasp the word of God and get what you want them to get. And so God, I'm thanking you that the message of light and the message of hope is going to go just as viral as all of the negative and dark news that has been going viral this year has gone viral. So we just thank you and praise you God for this time together. And I just pray that this will penetrate their spirits and their hearts and that you will use them mightily to even help their friends and even their parents. They may learn something that their parents didn't realize. So I thank you right now for these young women, these young young ladies, these young teen girls, and I pray amazing insight over them. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
our base is going to be, of course, Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. And I shouldn't really say, of course, because it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is aware of this. But we've heard about the armor of God. I remember going to Agape Christian Chapel. Um, Shout out to the late, late, God rest his soul. We lost a legend this year back home in Philly, uh, Reverend Dr. Reverend Melvin Floyd. Um, And I spent about eight years at that church. And um, what I what was so amazing was there was so much taught for the young people about Jesus. It was always about the cross. And I love that. Uh, because of course, today, I just feel like, you know, some of us have gotten away from the cross. But point blank period, there was this song, and it was the a song that represented the armor of God, and that would that would help us remember it. So Ephesians 6, 12 through 18, I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. Um, but before I do, I just kind of want to see if I kind of remember the song. So I got my feet shot with the preparation of peace. I got the sword of the spirit, my shield of faith. I got my breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation. I put on my armor and I'm ready for battle. Listen, (laughs) that song. (laughs) And you know what I loved about it, though, is honestly, it did break it down for even the, you know, the whole church would do it um, whenever we would sing the song. And it was usually like a couple Sundays a month. But why I loved it is because it really does help you remember what tools you have access to. So maybe that'll help, you know, the young ladies out there. I know, you know, I'm not a Beyonce or anything with my voice, but <laughs> I think it was pretty inspiring. Um, so I'm sorry, I said verse 12, but I'm actually going to start at verse 10. So it's verse 10 through 18. Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Verse 10. Your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Verse 13, because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides. So you're protected as you confront the slanderer, which is the enemy. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. So God never puts us in a fight without the ability to win. Verse 14, put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert, then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. And verses 17 and 18 in the Passion Translation ends like this. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all believers. So what I love about this is I'm going to give you practical tips and strategies with the foundation. And there are six pieces of armor that God gives us. And this week we're going to tackle three and the next week we'll do the the other three. Um, But what I like to say is there are six pieces of armor, but there's a seventh piece that wraps all of that up. And what it is, is prayer. And the way that verse, verse 18 ended, that passage I read, it says, pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times, which tells you while it wasn't necessarily inserted into the physical pieces of armor, how important that you can have these pieces. But if you're not praying, it's really pointless. Um. So just to get started, a lot of us are fighting things, and if we don't understand that most of what we're fighting, we can't even see, right? So whether you want to believe it or not, there is a wicked force behind the scenes controlling many people's thoughts, functioning, and behavior. This doesn't necessarily make individuals demons, but they can be influenced by a demonic power. And you have to understand that it's the spiritual realm of darkness that is working behind uh, these people, or even, I'm going to 
uh, break it down a little more for any parents when you get frustrated at your teens at your children uh, just acknowledge the fact that one you have to stop and pause and really ask God what is this spirit uh, if you feel like your teen daughter you know maybe she just got her cycle and you're like man her attitude is off the chain um, but but you really got to sometimes stop and ask God, what is it? What spirit is she struggling with? How is the enemy trying to use my daughter? And for my teen girls out there, you do want to understand that why you cannot blame everything on the devil. God, I was notorious for this, y'all. Like, I believe like, the devil made me do it. Like, what I learned, because I learned this at a young age. So I would be like, man, the devil made me do it. I'm trying to tell you. Man. Like, So we're we going to cancel that out right now. We're not doing it. Um, but what verse 12 does clearly explain to us is that we aren't wrestling with people, right? We're not wrestling with flesh and blood, but it's against something in the unseen world. And you have to really have an understanding that when you're confronted with arguments with family members, mother, daughter, husband, wife, whatever it is, you got to really say, okay, what is this? Is it a spirit of frustration? Is it a spirit of anger? Um, is it a spirit of fear you know if, if I'm telling her to do something and she says no is she being disrespectful or is she really scared to tackle that new project that I'm asking her to do in her room does she feel like she's not creative enough to um do what I asked her to do if it's something dealing with say an arts project or you know whatever it is you really got to look at the deeper level of what could be going on um and I think for me I want you to understand how I use these so it can really help you uh with some of the darkest moments of my life but I just want you to know that after you've done everything that you're supposed to do in the natural the spiritual part doesn't stop so often uh when you think about even say uh for young ladies out there when you have been praying you may have a sick parent you know I I understand that there are some teen girls out there carrying the weight of adult responsibilities that they didn't ask for um I mentioned I think on the first episode how for parents out there if your children if your teen daughter doesn't have a child she shouldn't be raising yours and I think I mentioned that in episode 1 and so in saying that, however, I understand that there are some young people out there who maybe the parent is sick. I actually met a young lady when I was doing substitute teaching back in the fall of 2017. I believe she had seven brothers and sisters and her mother was always in and out of the hospital and she was only a senior. Um, that's heavy. That's a lot. Uh, if you're in a single parent home and, and that weight falls on you. And so I just say that to say, like, I understand that some of you may be carrying that. So when you are called to be the strong one and you have to pray um, and you're doing whatever you're supposed to do in the natural, maybe you're filling out work. Um, I'm sorry. Maybe you're filling out paperwork to help your mother get disability or assistance. Uh, maybe you're doing everything you can in your power to make sure the lights stay on and electric. And you might have an aunt helping. I'm not saying you're completely alone, but whatever that scenario looks like, after you've done the, the stuff in the natural, don't stop praying. If you're waiting to hear back from a program, if you're waiting to hear back from someone who can help you, maybe a home health aide uh, is coming you know, on the way, but they're just backed up. You don't stop the, the spiritual part when you've done everything you can in the natural. And that's really what this is about. So the first piece of armor we're going to talk about about was in verse 14 and that armor is called the belt of truth and it talks about the belt of truth being around your waist and here's what I want to really harp on so many of you um the babies out there you know the truth right so whether it's been instilled in you by your parents your grandparents or what about your own ideals and moral boundaries I have met some young ladies when I was teaching or just with girls anthem, they feel so different because more of the world and more of their friends and more of the people they know are leading lives that aren't maybe morally right. They're into sex, they're into drugs, they're into smoking, they're into drinking. And a lot of these young girls that I've come across are like, I don't do that stuff. Right. And so a lot of, you know, the truth and, and you know, and the sad part about it is, when you're leaving, I understand the challenge that you face. Sometimes if you're leaving your house and I'm talking pre-pandemic or even if you are able to, or you might be entering spaces, your Zoom classroom or whatever it may be. When you enter these areas or you go out, you got to go out girded in your truth. Right. And the God's word is the foundation of all truth. So 
That's why I started and I said the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. It's the final decision maker in my life. And I pray it's also the final decision maker in your life. So just remember that. Um, as I stated, because some of the stuff you may be learning about, about Christ, you feel like it may be thrown at you. It doesn't make it wrong. So staying girded with your belt of truth is like keeping the truth in you and around you, even when you feel like everything is pushing against that truth. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I was in middle school, uh, probably about 12 years old, I remember trying to fit in. Right. Um, and to be honest, it was sexual activity and I called it sneaking drinking um, that was going on. And I started struggling more when I was like 16, 17 in high school. But in middle school, you know, I was kind of teased a little bit for being a plug. And well, that was their label. They ain't my label. So I don't receive that. But um, I didn't go to parties and stuff. I wasn't allowed to. And at the time, growing up in North Philly, there was this new club called Bobby. It was called Dances. And Bobby Dances was the person who had opened the club up down Gerard Avenue. And a lot of my friends were going to that club every weekend. I wasn't allowed to go. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't want to go. My mom didn't really have to. I never even asked. And my mom didn't have to really make that a rule because for me, I got saved at nine. And while I still had rebellious years in front of me that I went through and I've gone through and you've heard my testimony, there were certain things I would tell people. My rebellious thing was never clubbing. That that just wasn't my twist. Um, but I don't think it was as much as me just it not liking it because I've gone to clubs. I've been there, done that. I've been out and about. I'm not saying I never did it, but it wasn't a strong desire. And I believe it's because of what was instilled in me. And I had a strong love for God enough to know that I didn't want to be in a space where I could possibly compromise. I saw what was going on at the on the back of the school bus. Okay. I saw what was going on on my middle uh my middle school's campus because we had a large campus out in Mount Erie in Philadelphia. So Chestnut Hill. And so I, I saw what was going on when people sneak to the bathrooms and I'm gonna tell you, I snuck to the bathroom. I ain't sitting here trying to make it seem like it was other people. So I think my point was while I may have still been doing things that I wasn't supposed to do. And yes, I was still a virgin. Um, but it's like, there was still a part of me. And this is what I want you to understand about the truth. It never leaves you. There's always going to be a war between darkness and light, right and wrong, God and the enemy going on on the inside of you, your flesh and your spirit, which is essentially what it boils down to. So it's not that I didn't do wrong, but there was always something pulling me like Maya, you know, this isn't right or Maya. No, you don't need to do this. So I, you got to stay girded with truth. So how do you wear your belt of truth? Here's my recommendation. I think as young ladies, you should write down your top 10 morals that are based on the word of God, right? So for example, you might take the passage that was read today, or you may go and search, maybe write down the top 10 things that you are just not willing to do. If you don't want to have sex before marriage, don't. So then go and find those verses that speak to purity and speak to how God honors those who sacrifices and gives their life over to him. Um, if you don't want to uh, destroy your body at a young age or your face, even let me just say this. Nothing is more disheartening for me. And I'm not speaking ill of anyone, but I'm calling it like I see it. Nothing is more disheartening for me than seeing a beautiful young lady with black lips because of all the smoking she's done. That is like I'm not and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm calling it like it is like smoking, whether it's weed or cigarettes or whatever. It does more damage than you think it does. And it's not enough lip gloss to hide it. All right. So uh, y'all can take it in shade. Y'all can take it how y'all want. I'm just calling it like I see it. I just, you know, I, nothing is so disheartening. And I say that because a lot of young ladies do pride themselves on their looks. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. So it, you got to think about the long term. Like, what is this doing to me now? So if you don't want to smoke and hang out with certain people, don't. They could be popular all day long. And again, I know times have changed. So maybe you feel this message. Oh, I needed this like two years ago. No, you need it now. You know why? Because we're not always going to be in the house. 
We're not always going to be in this space where we can't access those areas. We may have to do it in a safer way, but it doesn't mean that the the clubs won't ever open back up or the teen hangouts won't open back up. It's going to be different, but we're not always going to be in the house. So write it down. Find the word of God that goes with it, the scripture, and, and be honest about it. What are the things you don't and won't do because of what you've been taught and actually you enjoy it? Like, I had to be honest, like, I actually enjoy being sober. Hello? <laughs> I mean, can I just want to be sober? You know? And that's not to say I don't have the occasional glass of wine, but can I just, can I enjoy the fact that I'm not high out my mind without, can we normalize, you know what, let me just, Father God, can we normalize in 2021 people not being judged for actually not taking part in certain activities? Can we normalize waiting for marriage, like, to have sex? Can we normalize not wanting to be, like, high all the time I want to be sober can we normalize that in 2021 okay so what you you know um you know what you like and you know what your your spirit tells you like no you don't want to do this it's not even you so just wake up daily and recite those scriptures and remember the truth that you're standing on it's your responsibility to stand in your moral truth but remember truth comes from the word of God not from social media not from the news, not from TikTok and other resources, not from your friends, not from your friend's parents. Well, her parent let her do this. Okay, well, her parent don't pay a bill up in here, you know. And so just remember that that's how you wear the belt of truth around your waist. You got to know the truth. So you can't be studying more of the world's mantras and the world's uh, you know agenda than you are God's. God's word is the foundation of all truth. All right. So I want to really encourage you to stay in that space and to discover truth by saying, here's the 10 things that I don't want to do. Right. These are my morals. So now let me go find scriptures for that. So I know that when I recite these scriptures daily, I'm being strengthened to stand on those morals. The second piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness, right? So righteousness is defined by Merriam-Webster as acting in accord with divine or moral law or free from guilt or sin. Now, here's what I thought was so dope. The slang definition in Webster, Merriam-Webster, the famous dictionary we've all been using all of our lives, the slang definition says genuine or excellent. I love that Merriam-Webster defines righteousness, which is a word in the Bible that is in the Bible multiple times, multiple upon multiple times, as genuine or excellent. And because I know my young babies love the slang, that's dope, right? But what I want you to first know is that righteousness is not something you earn. You receive Christ as your savior. That's salvation. When you receive him, you accept God's son as your personal savior. So you don't need to earn righteousness. I remember feeling plagued by so much sorrow and guilt because I honestly thought I had to earn the righteousness of God. And it wasn't until I was like 18 or 19 when Pastor Tracy Bernard of Impacting Your World Ministries, Impacting Your World Christian Center, um, which is one of my spiritual mothers, she said to me, no, my way, you got that wrong. You don't, you just receive it. And I was sitting in her car crying because I really just, I just, I thought that that was what it was. And of course, the enemy wanted me to live like that, thinking that I had to earn God's righteousness. So I just wanted to put that out there right away so that you understand it's something that you immediately have. You are the righteousness of God of Christ. Okay. And once you accept Christ as your savior, that is your blood born right. So with that, you will always have access to a better way of living according to God's word because of what's inside of you. God is not, righteousness is not a perfect performance. So that's not what God is looking for. But what he is looking for is a perfect heart. And when your heart is perfect, turn towards him, that will always, always turn towards him. Meaning if you have a heart posture, right? And you are looking to please God in your life, that that means your heart is conditioned. And sometimes that conditioning does take place through trials and tests. And sometimes it takes place with us going into our words, studying and doing what we're supposed to do. But just understand that that's what it's about. It's a perfect heart turned towards him and not a perfect performance. Um, But I would say, for an example, wearing this piece of armor, it looks a lot like stepping away from friends who could be telling you to do something that you know you shouldn't do. And again, you probably don't even want to do it. 
Um, but I want to just break this down for you. One thing I've learned in this life, the reason why at the beginning I said you can't always blame stuff on the devil. In fact, you shouldn't. Um, you don't even really need to have him all up in your language like that. As long as you're focusing on God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, and speaking the word of God, very seldom do you need to even bring his name into your language or prayer. Um, that's why we call out spirits and not necessarily just him as a whole. But anyway, um, when you aren't living righteously, though, righteousness does come with behaviors that God expects us to live by. Why? Because righteousness creates a new character. Righteousness builds us up. That's why when you're, it says in second Corinthians, you're created five, 17, you're a new creature in Christ. When you give your life over to him. So being new in Christ, you obviously know you can't do the same things. That's why there is faith. What our works is dead. So if you have faith to believe that God can save you and give you a new life, you got to kind of work that faith by making sure you're not doing things that would dishonor God. So yeah, it does have a behavior thing attached to it, but it's not in God saying, oh, you did that. Oh, my God, you're no longer righteous. It doesn't. He doesn't take that away from you. The accuser, our enemy, the enemy of our souls, he does have more ammunition when we when we give him access to our lives. So when we open the door, young ladies, with certain behaviors that we know aren't pleasing to God, the enemy now has access into our lives. The accuser, our enemy of our souls like I stated he does he has access you have to learn that whenever you open a door while God is not taking righteousness away or punishing you I'm going to be honest with you he is like listen there there are promises attached to staying in my presence and staying in my protection and doing what I called you to do being obedient and then if you step out of the realm of that it's not that he punishes you it's that you've given the enemy you've given demons you've given influence these spirits we just read Ephesians 6 you're giving those principalities reign in your life it's not God punishing you because you did something and I really want you to understand this because I do believe a lot of young people have that misconstrued especially when we see crazy things going on in the world it's not God you did this it's, wait a minute, what actions of mine allowed me to step into something where the enemy had full reign? I'll give you a perfect example. I talk a lot about not watching certain movies and not listening to certain music. So let me just say, I'll go with the uh, sex just because we have talked about sex before on the podcast. So if I, as an adult woman, know that listening to a very sexual song, let's just say Trey songs, or let's just say Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion, um, whether it is WAP or something else. But if I'm listening to something that is only talking about my body parts, is only talking about sex, is only talking about very, you know, just inundated sexual behavior. It's, it's, it's a bunch of just metaphors, allegories, and just hyperboles, whatever is in that song, um, whether it's rap or, or R&B, I'll say Trey songs for me because I kind of grew up listening. And when I say grew up, I mean the last few years listening to Trey song, right? And so if I'm listening to a song like um, I Invented Sex, please don't go look it up if you don't know it okay it's not for you to go not for you to go to apple music right now okay let me hear the song she's talking no 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 ain't nobody tell you to do that okay but we do share our truths here because that's how people get set free so if i'm listening one of my favorite albums by him was ready there are maybe two or three songs that i listen to now on for ready and two of them are like wedding love song and one of them is like a really cute poppy song but there's no sex or vulgarity in it like so for you to have an album that has like 18 songs and i can only listen to three well guess what that's it and like the truth be told i haven't even listened to trey songs that i don't know how long but i'm saying that just to say to you that if it can entice me and encourage me hearing certain songs i have been in sex or any song like that to go and think about a guy that i used to be with and then maybe i've cleared out my phone but let's just say you know i pick up the phone and i see his number and i decide to call him or how we do these days slide up in his dm you know you don't even need the number these days um so if that happens to me as a 36 year old woman what do you think happens to a child a young person a teenager a 16 year old who is more susceptible to the enemy schemes because you are still building your spiritual stamina so he's like man uh, she you know i can get to her 
And it's not to say because of your age that you don't know how to handle this God thing. But what it does say is you have less years on earth and you're building your spiritual stamina. The weapons that we use in Ephesians 6, they're available to anybody regardless of age. I said it in my new book, Warren for My Girls, that it doesn't matter how old you are. You need a book like that. You need a weapon like that because, yeah, the enemy beats. He starts fighting you the minute you come out the womb. So why should why should you wait? Right. But the difference between a 16 year old and a 36 year old one is 20 years. So how much more experience do I have? So I have more maturity because I've sown more into the spiritual realm, into the heavenly realm and into God's word and kingdom that I have the stability and the maturity because of my access. Right. Because I've taken advantage of that access. So all it is, is that because you're younger, you don't have as much experience, but you can at any age, grab hold of God's word and receive the righteousness, wear your breastplate of righteousness, be girded with the belt of truth around your waist. That's why I'm giving you these tools now. So just think about that, though. If I'm 36 and I know I can't listen to certain music because I'm grown and it bothers me, why would you think at 16 you can listen to any music that enforces hypersexual, like this hypersexual generation? So if you do that, just remember there's access. The enemy now has access to you. And that's not because God took his hand off of you. That's because you took your hand. You took God's hand off of you, if that makes sense. So one of my tips and strategies for that is to ask God to purify your heart and to give you a heart for him. It's a, um, it's a really easy ask, but it's not easy to do. And so in other words, it's easier said than done. Right. But um. He already desires that for you. So when you ask him, ask him to show you how you should be living at your age. What should I be doing? How can I help out more at home? God, who am I? Ask God questions so that he can fill you with more of him. And he's not offended because his word says, come boldly to the throne of grace and ask. That ask, when you see ask in the word of God, is not just talking about asking for things. It's talking about, hey, God, look, I need to know how to do this. I ask God before I move on to the third uh, piece of armor. I asked God just a couple of days ago, yesterday and the day before that, because it's constant. It's a constant prayer of mine to help me with some of my reactions sometimes. Now, I don't react on people. It might just be an email I get or something that frustrates me with work or something. And I'm like, you you guys should see me in here working from home. I'd be like, what? I'd be like, man, these people are crazy. Like, what is up with these tenants and blah, 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 because I work in property management. And then like 10 minutes later, I'll be like, God, it wasn't even that deep. Why did I milk a bad five minutes? And it wasn't even a bad five minutes. I just read the email too quick and got all up in my feelings just because I'm me. So when I started praying yesterday... I mean, like I said a couple days ago, but yesterday it really happened because I came home from an open house and there was uh, something from UPS in my door and I got so mad and I was just like, Maya, don't. So I'm saying that to say God is honored when you ask him for help. I was like, God, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I know I've been working on being more gentle in my tone and in my spirit. You created me to be bold, but I've been submitting my aggression to you for that aggressive spirit that is in me. I mean, I can't help, you know, um, like part of where I grew up and part of who I am is also in my bloodline. And uh, I've, I've been submitting that to you for the last couple of years. But I'm going to ask you if you can really help me with this area. I need you. I need you to show me how to be more gentle because I'm naturally rough and aggressive and I can be hard on myself. And so what does it do? It, tri it trickles out into being hard on people. And that's not how God created us to be. He, he gave us all our own unique gifts and personalities and character traits, but they should always be submitted to the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we'll yeah talk about the fruits of the Spirit another time, but that's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. All right, so just ask God. Number three, the gospel of peace on your feet. So what the gospel of peace looks like, um, and I spent a little bit of time here. Uh, the first two, the Holy Spirit really was flowing. And then when I got to number three, I really spent some time there because I was like, God, I want to make sure that they understand this well. So when 
the word of God mentions the gospel of peace anywhere. It's talking about the good news of God, right? So if you are saved as a young lady, as a teen girl, if you are saved, then you have, you are equipped with the good news. You know that the way to the father is through the son, Jesus Christ. You know that when you make Christ your savior, he has forgiven you of all your sins, removed all the guilt, all the shame, every stain that sin could have ever plagued your life with and given you a new name. You know these things. That's the good news that people in this world need to hear. Don't ever think because there's a bunch of churches or a bunch of ministries or a bunch of Christian podcasts that there are not people left that need to hear the good news. I just want to throw that out there. So because you've been armed with that, what it looks like is standing strong in the word of God. What you can't do is let the enemy steal it from you by making you unstable during trying times. While many adults may go through these trying times and they're frustrated, like 2020 probably frustrated babies, okay? There were probably pregnant women, babies in the womb, and babies was like, we we good. We we ain't coming out for this. This is some foolishness. (laughs) 2020 is a foolish. And I know that sounded really crazy, but I am convinced it was some babies out there like, yo, what? I'm not ready. Like, can we wait till 2021? And we don't even know what 2021 is going to look like. But I'm just thinking of like 2020 probably frustrated everyone from like newborn to like 99, right? So in saying that, like many people experienced um, a lot of instability. There, there wasn't always stability. This year was rough, even for the millionaires and gazillionaires. So um, whether it was rough emotionally, don't take anything from anybody just because, you know, for example, Oprah and Tyler Perry have a lot of money. They've given back. Tyler Perry did amazing things, but that doesn't mean he didn't suffer mentally and emotionally. You know, when you aren't around your people and you can't do well, Tyler, actually, that might not have been a Tyler Perry been out here working. <laughs> He's been out here safely working, but he's been out here working. <laughs> Tyler was like, COVID, we no, we we getting these films done and we're doing it safely. And he has. He has. So, okay, maybe that that wasn't necessarily the example, but I think the point I'm making is that um regardless of someone's status, this year was really hard, right? Regardless of their financial status. So everybody experienced some form of being unstable, whether in emotions, in their spirit whether they pulled away from God, drew closer to God, somebody out there, everybody experienced an unstable time. And what the gospel of peace does and the good news of the Lord, which is the word of God, um, specifically the good news of what God has called us to share as our great commission in these last days, um, that when you have that and you're stable in that, you revert back to that. Like no matter how frustrated I was this year and no matter how overwhelming it was, I don't care what I thought I wanted to do. I found myself when I was still working at the credit union, coming home, going right to the word, coming home, worshiping, coming home, praying, coming home, warring. It was like a natural thing for me. Even if I said, man, I'm going home and I'm going to have me some ice cream and watch my favorite Netflix shows. So that's what the gospel of peace on your feet looks like. It's standing strong in the word of God and making sure that when you are encountering people, they're looking for your story. Let me just tell you that it doesn't matter how young you are. People are looking for your story and God is still developing your story. So you don't want to let the enemy disrupt your development. The enemy wants to keep you from sharing the gospel of peace. I love when I meet young people who are like evangelists and they be like, oh, you know, I can't wait to get, you know, people saved. They're excited about, you know, at the time, like I said, pre-COVID Sunday school. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun. But what I want you to understand is that. If you're wondering, how does this apply to me and what can I do? We're all in the house. Here's here's what the Holy Spirit gave me for you. Sharing negativity is easy. Reposting, retweeting, TikToking, uh, Snapchatting, negativity, darkness. Um, you know, even with the songs. Now, I'm not sitting here saying every secular song is horrible. Come on. Your girl's favorite artist is Nas. Okay. Your girl still loves, um, you know, Beyonce's version of Before you, Before I Let Go. Like, I just want to be clear. Nobody's saying that you have to just live like a hermit. But what I am saying is that anything you feed that's negative and you retweet and you repost that you're spreading the kingdom of darkness. And all that does is breed chaos and hell. 
We don't need more chaos and hell. We saw what 2020 looked like. So your feet should always be prepped to share the peace that God brings through his good news and how it changed you. I'm not saying get on social media and preach every day, but let me just share this. What this means is that when the enemy can't stop you, and I mentioned this in the IG prayer, he'll distract you. So if you're not discouraged by your own challenges and situation, like let's say, for example, there's a young lady out there and things were hard for your family, but you, you know, things are okay. Like you weren't necessarily really discouraged because you're grounded in Christ. So what he'll do is he'll distract you from sharing Christ with others. And when he can do that, whether he stops you because you're overwhelmed or whether he keeps you from sharing the good news, he's winning. Right. Or if he can can get you or if he can get you to complain and whine and share all your depressing, you know, thoughts and heaviness, he's disrupted your focus. So now you're thinking more about the situation than you are how God is using this situation to strengthen your faith muscles. So let me just say this for all the babies out there, all the teen girls and adults, um, but specifically for my teen babies out there, I need you to unfollow every toxic and and unhealthy. I'm sorry, unhealthy page that you follow. I think that you know what those pages are as you listen and as you're, you know, hearing me. I think, you know, and it can even be as far as maybe for the last um, 11 days of 2020, we're moving social media as a whole. Um, I'm going to share something transparent with you and I want you to understand that this is why it's so important for you to be more saturated in the word and ways of God than anything. Um, if you're struggling with low self-esteem and your body, you have body shaming issues, guess what the enemy will do? He will have you follow every bad chick in the industry and beyond so that you can feel even worse about your body. When I was dealing with, I would say up until about 20, so up until about 16 years ago, I still struggled with um, insecurities. We always will as women, but there was still like a little bit of struggle between 19 and 20 um, when I knew the enemy was really, really combating me hard because I had really started to get the help that I needed um, from the church I was at at the time. Plus, I was warring, like I was fighting for my destiny and then once I understood his game I really started to get um he started to get exposed more and that really he didn't like that because now when you go get the help you're looking for please know it it will get harder because he doesn't want to let you out of his grip so I remember um I was at that age I loved loved like Destiny Child Beyonce but definitely because I started with the Destiny Child era um loved them love them and I would listen to Beyonce all the time I'm talking all the time I'm not saying all day but just all the time and I remember um one of the women of God who was assisting me at that time who I had shared some of my darkest things with and the Holy Spirit would speak to her and she knew just what to say but also very down to earth very loving and she said um she said to me, let me ask you a question. If you are still struggling with low self-esteem or you have some esteem issues about your looks specifically, don't, what do you think listening to Beyonce and watching her videos all the time, like will do to you? Now she wasn't so much saying like listening to Beyonce was causing me to have like crazy behaviors or nothing, but she was like, just think about it. And I said, yeah, you're right. Because as a um, darker skinned woman, and I'm not one of those women who do the dark and light skin thing, but I'm saying hearing you're cute for a dark skinned girl growing up did not feel good. So naturally, it's not that I ever wanted to look like Beyonce, but I was able to admit to her and I understood what she was saying was that we think it's just like we're good. Like, oh, I'm just jamming. She killing it. You know, crazy in love. You know, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh. Like, we just, like, it's a song. Like, we really just be in it. But the enemy is that sneaky and subtle. This is the point that I'm making where you don't even realize, like, there were times during those two years between 19, age 19 and 20, where I felt deeper about my looks. It was like, what is going on? And it wasn't just because I was listening to her. But the point was that, I obviously somewhere subconsciously thought that if I could look like her, if I look, if I could get my body like hers, if I could, you know, my hair was always long and it was mine. So I ain't never, I ain't never tripped there. But 
Uh, and it is mine. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it was mine, but my hair was always cool. But I mean, like, as far as like the look and, you know, her uh, beautiful lips, the way makeup laid on her skin, subconsciously, I did start to want those things, not even realizing that it was probably because I was obsessing over her in a sense, not worshiping her because I, I it won't, won't do that. But I was, in a sense, obsessing over her. And when she pointed that out, I was not offended. I thought about what she said. I prayed about it. And I said, God, well, you know, show me what to do. So that's why I use that example. Uh, He'll have you going out there to follow, you know, every bad chicken industry. And you'll be feeling worse and worse about your body. How that pertains to the gospel of peace. I use that as an example to say, because what you follow pulls you. Right. So if you're following negative stuff and negative news and fake news and bad news and all the, you know, secular music and you're pouring all this stuff about pill popping and drinking and sex and wop all into your spirit, it, you got to unfollow that stuff in order for you to be able to understand the importance of how you can use those same tools to share the good news. And that could just be you getting on Instagram and saying, hey, good morning, guys. Um, I know we're young. I'm 16. I'm talking to all my followers out there. But you can still love God and be fly. Like, have fun. And again, I'm not telling you to go and be a preacher. I'm just sharing with you that if there are more negative things out there and not as much positive, it is hard to share. But I am telling you, there is way more positive out there. It's probably way bigger than a negative, but nobody's sharing it. So good news could be you celebrating that God kept your parents throughout this year and that they were able to keep their home and you guys have a roof over your head. It doesn't mean you're preaching. You're just saying, hey, guys, look, let's start sharing the good stuff. Let's start sharing the positive stuff. Okay. So I pause there because this part really jumped out at me. And I think although we're pretty much done with the first three weapons, the reason why God really um, had me speak on the look and the self-esteem and the looks and the body thing is because there are so many images that the enemy is putting out there to pull our young girls away, to pull you away. And he's using that tool of social media to get you to see more butts and, you know, all of this stuff. And and yes, I said it like it's not me trying to be crass, but it's the reality is we're seeing an over sexualized generation. And the enemy will body shame you into thinking that if you don't look like that, a man will never love you. If you don't move like that, a man will never love you. You should just go ahead and start putting a little bit of selfies. I'm buttoning the first two buttons on your shirt when you do it so that, you know, they could just get to see that you a little sexy. First of all, nobody should be seeing you sexy, but your future husband. So I want you to look to the guy who created you and ask him to help you see you the way he does. The only way you can be strong in this area and even begin to maybe help someone else in this area is if you are in the word of God and you understand that you were made in his image and likeness. The good news of God celebrates who you are and brings you closer to where you need to be. The negative and bad news from the enemy makes you feel worse about who you are and pulls you deeper into despair and discouragement so you can't even see who God called you to be. Isn't that ironic? The good news of God celebrates who you are and brings you closer to where you need to be. But the negative and bad news from the enemy makes you feel worse about who you are and pulls you deeper into despair and discouragement. So you can't even see who God called you to be. Which one will you choose today? I pray that the first three pieces of armor, which I'll go over them again, was the belt of truth around your waist. Uh, Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18, um, the belt of truth is mentioned in verse 14. The breastplate of righteousness is mentioned right after that. And then the gospel of peace on your feet, verses 15 and 16. Um, And next week, we'll go over the last three pieces of armor. And I'm excited to get there because I think it's going to really enlighten you and show you just how much God cares that you have everything you need to honor him, to live for him, to worship him, to serve him, and to do what he's called you to do. And he's not going to fail you. He doesn't want you to fail.
right? So if he doesn't want you to fail, then that means that you can't look at it like, well, it's all this stuff out here, you know, why would God, God didn't create it. You have to remember there are two different worlds at battle here, two different spiritual realms and two different worlds. So just because something is created doesn't mean it's for you. Just because something is there doesn't mean you should listen to it or watch it. I wanted to like, um, I think it's Pretty Little Things on Netflix. The new series with the ballet, the ballerina, the ball, uh, ballet dancers. I'm sorry. I know I'm stumbling a little bit. But that happens when I speak too fast. So forgive me. Um, but the ballet dancers. And I got all the way to the end of the first episode and was ready because I used to dance. So I love stories like that. And I, I stopped because there's a sex scene. And while it has nothing to do with whether it's a homosexual sex scene or a opposite sex sex scene, I had an issue with scandal with, you know, Olivia and, and, and Fitz. It was starting to be too much. I was like, this is channel six people, you know, like, so I'm just saying for me, I don't care who it is or what it is. I don't care if it's my celebrity crush. I don't need to saturate my mind with images like that. When I am asking God to keep preparing me for my husband so that we, when we are joined together, we'll remain pure until marriage. I don't need those seeds in my, my spirit because all it does is sow seeds. And I was really like, God, I believe I can get to this, to the end of the show without being like, you know, and I was just like, oh my God. So you know what that tells me? That tells me that all the other episodes are going to do the same thing. I'm not sitting here allowing Hollywood to hoodwink me. All right. So I want you to know anything I'm encouraging you to do. Your girl is taking lead. This ain't no, oh, she not practicing what she preach. And I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying I get it right all the time. But I just want you to know you're not alone in this. And, and for parents out there, I, re- I did this episode and I believe this one and next week, spiritual warfare strategies for teen girls for you as well. Because if you hear this, you can teach your teen girls how to effectively fight against the enemy in the darkness and fight the good fight of faith their way give them help them create a strategy for them and not the one you think is going to work for them but also for you to understand that it's some things you got to change for single mothers out there before you think your daughter is going to take heed my mother literally walked through celibacy since i was probably 17 and i'm 36 because she understood that in order for her to be example for me I, she had to make changes herself. So you're responsible as well. If you're a single mother out there and you're dating some guys and you just know, or you're watching and listening, y'all, I mean, y'all riding, you know, to the market together. Why, why, what, what is going on? (laughs) What? My mother would never. And that's again, no judgment. Everything I say is in love, but I do want you to understand that these very things that we're saying to our daughters, we need to be an example in that area. I know you may feel lonely. It's a, it's a crazy year and this holiday season is probably really constricting at your heart, but I'm telling you, God is a God who will give you the desires of your heart according to his will. And that's what that verse means. He puts the desires in your heart and then you know what you should be praying for and believing him for. So if you are believing for a husband, if you're a single mother and you have a teen daughter and you haven't had any you know, luck in that area, you got to trust God with that area and stop doing it your way. Um, Blackpeoplemeet.com is not probably God's way for you. If you're someone who has not learned how to love herself and to connect with herself, to connect with her daughter, you got to steward well the relationship that are in front of you before God will allow you to steward a marriage. It's a whole nother level. I'm not even married and I know that. That was for free. Don't know why I felt led to say that. Praise the Lord. So our girl file, our girl file honoree for episode four. I Look, Deja Williams, you are amazing. You are lit. You are everything. Um, Deja Williams is actually a NASA engineer, an educator, and a creator. I found her story on Instagram earlier this week, went ahead and followed her, and been studying her website. But what I love about this young lady is she really knows who she is and she embraces it. So Deja's story, she uses hip hop and um, yeah, well, she uses hip hop to make math and science more accessible to young people. And so there's a quote from BET.com where she says, I create music that fuses hip hop and math as a tool to encourage underprivileged youth to explore STEM. And we all know the STEM, STEM, 
sorry, going fast again, is the science, tech, engineering, and math field. So anything in that field. Um, She's amazing when it comes to this. And if you go to her website, Deja Williams, that's D-A-J-A-E, uh, Williams.com, she actually has her newest video uh, that she posted on social media called Unit Conversions. And it's an educational song. When I tell you this is just the cutest little thing I have ever seen, she basically takes concepts that are really hard for kids to understand, whether in science or math, and she infuses them. And this is a young lady who, if I'm not mistaken, I read in her story, she wasn't even the hugest fan of science and math. And today she is a NASA engineer. She's 25 years old. Do you know what that means? First of all, black girl magic all day. Hello. So we just like black girl magic. And let me just tell you why I even shared her as a girl file honoree and why I honor her so much. She was a basketball player and still is, but she went to college on a full ride basketball scholarship. Everything in her life was revolved around basketball. That's all she wanted. That's all she saw. Right. And what happened was she understood that education was number one for her, no matter what with basketball, education was number one. She had so many setbacks. I really encourage you guys to go to her website because yes, she's 25 now, but her journey started earlier than that. She was, you know, a teenager. Um, Obviously when she went to college, she must've been like 18 or 19. So she's right where some of you are. And you're thinking my life has to revolve around this one thing. Well, she ended up having to go back home because there was no more scholarship. She was devastated. She talks about feeling like a failure. And then she ended up like interning somewhere. Things started to change for her. She went back to the school, um, but she was able to study um, science and engineering. And that's really what made her realize her love. She had an internship. Uh, well, one of the offers she received, I believe was working at Apple. She had an app an offer from Apple. Um, And this was a company who had turned her down previously. So this story to me, this young lady story is about perseverance, knowing who you are and never giving up. She didn't change her identity to fit in with the world. She said, no, I believe kids can learn math and science if I am rapping. Her raps aren't what you're going to usually hear on the radio, but they're so cute. And I love that she loves, she took her love for hip hop. She took her love for science and math, even basketball, and is influencing the generation behind her. And shout out to her for being a young engineer at NASA. That's the part that really made me say, wow. Um, But her life's mission is to expose as many students to STEM. Again, we know what STEM stands for as she can. She does it through hip hop. She does it through music. Um, And her music is fun. And she has a brand, a production company called Listen Up Education. Um, And she's just, she's moving and shaking. I'm here for it. I really want you guys to be sure you do go and follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is Deja.Monet. That's D-A-J-A-E. Dot Monet. It'll be in the details of the podcast, but I'm here for it. And when I discovered her, I was like, yeah, she's my next girl file honoree. Like, I am like, I was so here for it and just so like on it because I was, my, my spirit was filled. I just feel like when we see these representations, you know, I tell people all the time, girls anthem is for everyone, but I don't deny that I am a black woman who encourages our young black girls who look like me, who feel like they don't have opportunity to do some of the things that they've seen their white colleagues or white classmates and white counterparts be able to do. And so I am always going to celebrate and honor the culture in which I came from um, because I'm a black girl who represents, you know, an author who represents a speaker who represents um, being able to walk through doors in Hollywood, but maintain my integrity because I love Christ. And so representation matters. The more we see, the more we're able to uh, be encouraged to know that we too can do the same thing or better. Um, But just don't give up. I think her story, I want you to go and follow her and read her story on her website. The amount of setbacks this young lady had and she's only 25. It is so inspiring to know that she didn't think basketball was her only lane. Um, She didn't think that she, you know, couldn't do other things. And I'm sure she probably had dreams of actually playing in the WNBA, but God took her a different route and she didn't give up. She used every gift on the inside of her to get to where she is. So Deja Williams, Deja Monet Williams. <laughs> we honor you. We see you. We love you. And we are rooting for you, girl. We rooting for everybody, Black, but we are rooting for you. And I thank God for your life. 
Father, we thank you for today. We thank you so much that your word is meant to be um, chewed on and, and eaten. It's meant to be one of the main meals that we always have. And I say that to say, even as a young teen girl may be listening and she feels like it's too much to understand. The book is too big. But I believe, God, you are speaking to them through this podcast, and you will lead them right to Ephesians 6. Start at Ephesians 6. Start wherever God leads you. And I'm praying for your healing in the area where you feel um, insufficient. God doesn't want you to feel insufficient, but just know that anywhere that you feel weak, he is there to be your strength. He's not asking you to come perfect. He's asking you to come ready. And so I just thank you, Lord God, that you will give every person who hears this the strength and the courage to know that when they pick up these tools, when they put on their armor, they will be unstoppable for the kingdom of God and they will be able to push back and stop the kingdom of darkness. And if they feel like, oh, it's just one of me, tell them, Lord God, whisper it to their hearts whenever they're in your presence, not to worry about it just being one of you because there are Christians all over the world of all ages, all races, all socioeconomic statuses praying. And when we all do our parts, God can use us mightily for the kingdom. So I thank you that these strategies will be implemented, that parents will implement them and teach their children if they hear the podcast first, that they will feel like this was what they needed to push their kids deeper into a love with God, but not to push them physically or to force it. But if they just give them, listen to this, give it to them. You got to take control of the content your children are absorbing on a daily basis. Giving them a phone and not having control over it, that is not something I believe God intended ever. And so I just thank you that now this year, God has made it so that families are together in the same household. So you had an opportunity to assess what your children were being exposed to. And so now it's time to make a better decision. And I'm praying for each young lady that she would boldly know who she is in Christ. You would give her a spirit of boldness, even the most introverted young lady out there, that she would know that linking up with God, she could become more bold and that she can fight the kingdom of darkness so that she can become all you've created her to be. We love you, Lord God, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Make sure you follow your girl, Writer Maya, at Writer Maya on Instagram on all platforms. Follow the movement at Girls Anthem Movements. Uh, make sure you are following the movement because I know God is getting ready to do some really amazing things. Uh, and some surprises will be coming up in 2021. Make sure you order the new book, my new book, Warring for My Girls. We pray together, we slay together, which is another great tool to have um, to add to your arsenal to fight and wage against uh, the enemy. Wage war, I'm sorry, wage war against the enemy. It is available on Amazon in print and Kindle format. I love you guys so much and I'm looking forward to next week. Bye.